Once upon a time, the Bodhisattva was a sea captain and he became very wise because he could steer through very difficult and treacherous seas and he always found a way ahead and he always found a way of keeping his balance and keeping everybody on his boat safe. But the salt from the waves and the wind soon eroded his eyes and he became blind. So he took to land and decided to work for the king because he could assess things very well. Having spent so long on a boat, he just knew the measure of things and how to work out their worth and their value. So he worked for the king as an assessor. And the king sent him things to look at and examine, explore and see if they were worth him using. So he sent him a horse. And the Bodhisattva felt the horse because he couldn't see it. And he realised that this horse had been very badly nourished as a baby and wasn't suitable and the, it could still feel the effects of that. So he wasn't suitable to be a state horse. And he did the same with an elephant. The king wanted uh, one elephant to be a state elephant. And he felt the trunk and he felt the legs and he felt the shoulders. And he said, no, you mustn't use this elephant. His mother dropped him when he was a baby and he's never really been quite the same since. And this turned out to be true. And he did the same with the state carriage. He found holes in it nobody had seen because he could just feel it with his hands and feel the weaknesses in it. And the same with a beautiful woolen cloth. He could feel where the mice had eaten it and others couldn't see. And each time the king gave him eight coins. But Suparika, for that was his name, was actually a little bit miffed by this. Eight coins is not very much, and he was doing a very, very good job. So he decided to go back to his hometown and just stay by the sea. When he got there, everybody was really pleased to see him, and some people had just organised a really wonderful boat trip to go and get treasures from far lands. They wanted him to be the captain. At first he refused and said, how can I be captain of a ship? I'm blind. But they said, no, we really want you. You always knew how to steer through difficult seas and when there was danger and how to get to the best places. We want you to do it. So eventually he agreed and they sailed for quite a while. After a while, they came to a curious sea with loads of fish with noses like razors and bodies like humans. I don't know what they were, some sort of swordfish, I suppose. And it was called Razor Stained Sea. And people were frightened seeing all these fish and they asked the captain, Saparika, what should we do? We're very nervous about these curious fish. And he said, no, don't worry, it's just a sea you travel through. And he knew that in a sea like this, you could find diamonds. So when they were asleep and weren't looking, he threw ballast out of the ship and hauled in diamonds, just enough to make everybody rich. He didn't want to tell the other people on the boat because he knew that if he did, they would try and grab all the diamonds and the boat would sink. So he just kept quiet about it. Eventually they came to a sea which looked gold in colour and, and flickering like fire. They said, what is this sea? It's so strange. And Suparika said, ah, that's the stained with fire sea. It's fine, you just travel through it. So they travelled through it, and again, secretly, Suparika pulled up, this time gold from the depths of the sea, and brought it in, and again threw out ballast. And again, he didn't tell anybody, because he knew they would try and take it all. They then came to a sea which was as white as milk, it just stretched everywhere, beautiful milkiness. He said, this is a very beautiful sea. And the Bodhisattva, Suparika, said, yes, it is. And we'll travel through it. And again, he knew what this sea hid. And it was treasures of silver. So again, in secret, he threw out ballast, pulled up a judicious amount of silver, 
and let the boat go on its way. They then came to a, a blue-green sea, like the colour of kusa grass, waving around in the wind. And they said, this is a very beautiful and strange sea. What's this like? And he said, ah, oh, that's the kusa grass sea. And again, he knew what this sea had to offer. So in secret and in seclusion, he just pulled up all the emeralds that he could safely accommodate on his boat. And they travelled on and he didn't tell anybody about it. Then he came to a sea that, uh, that looked like a whole ocean of bamboo stalks, young bamboo stalks. And they told him about it and said, Suparika, what sea is this? And he says, ah, this is the bamboo stalk sea. And again, when no one was looking, he threw out ballast, threw out things people didn't want, anything, any luggage that wasn't needed, he threw it out. And he pulled from that sea lapis lazuli. And again, he took just what was needed for them all and left the rest and travelled on. So he had built up great treasures for all the passengers on the ship and none of them knew the treasures that were there. He didn't take too much, he took enough and he threw out any luggage or ballast that wasn't needed. Eventually they come to a sea which is really scary. It's called Mare's Mouth Sea. When you come to the entrance of this sea, it's as if great precipices of waves surround you on either side. And it makes this terrible din and noise. And it was really frightening and it looked as if, as if it was going to suck the whole ship in. They tell the Bodhisattva, the Suparika, about it and he says, Ah, yes, that is the Mermouth Sea. We mustn't go there. Just keep away from it. We are in danger. But he said, don't worry, I will get you through this danger. So he goes downstairs, washes, puts clean white clothes on, goes upstairs, back to the uh, bow of the ship, and sits there and makes what's called a declaration of truth. Now in ancient India, if you made a declaration of truth, and it was true, then very wonderful things could happen. So he made his declaration of truth. He said, in all my life, at any time, I have been very careful never to harm any living being at all. And it was true, and the waves responded. And then, as if by magic, the boat, as if the story said it had psychic powers, flew up in the air and flew all the way back to their home port. And it didn't stop there. Because it flew all the way to the Bodhisattva Suparika's captain's house and stopped there, outside. So it was very easy to unload the diamonds, the gold, the silver, the emeralds, and the lapis lazuli. And when he'd done this, he told all the passengers and the merchants on the boat, now here is your wealth. And he divided it equally amongst all of them. And he said, none of you need ever go to sea again. Because remember, in those times, the seas were very, very dangerous and a lot of people never returned. So now stay at home and enjoy your wealth and I'll keep some for myself too and we'll all be well off and we shall live happily and fare along according to our karma and our destiny. And so that is what they did. Now in this story, the Bodhisattva was developing wisdom and I think it's shown in quite a lot of ways in this story how the intuition and the knowledge of wisdom steers people through very dangerous seas and how sometimes in even the worst and most scary seas you can still find treasure to take home. So, thank you and we'll have another story next week.